Carl is not dead. Well, technically he's not dead yet, but let's look at three ways, three theories that Carl can or might survive the Walking Dead. So there's quite a lot of speculation that Carl, that Chandler Riggs will leave the uh, Walking Dead. In fact, there's a lot of like evidence to show that, considering they've had like fights and like dis like disputes and there's Dad getting involved. All these rumors, all this like big circus of him leaving the Walking Dead. More probably more than anybody else in the show. But Scott and Gimples has not said that he will definitely be leaving the show. He always does this thing where he's like, mm, well, he might do, or he's not dead yet. Which kind of doesn't confirm anything. It highly implies, but it doesn't confirm. Remember the whole Glenn thing when every it was very implied that he was dead, but he wasn't dead. So basically, until we see Carl die, I don't believe that he will die. Stop what you're doing, because don't go... <laughs> Don't just automatically comment. Just don't comment or just automatically dislike or dismiss these theories. Listen to what we've got to say to these three theories and then say in the comments below what you think. But let's have a look first. Theory number one, the bite didn't penetrate Carl's t-shirt. Although there is a bite mark on Carl's side, it is the cleanest bite mark that we've ever seen on the show. Normally they're really bloody or really bad, even the just the tiny scratches are big, huge wounds that infect people. This theory pretty much says that there was no flesh on flesh contact. When he was bitten, he was bitten on the t-shirt, but it didn't penetrate the skin. It only bit the t-shirt and he was saved by the tiny little piece of material between the walker's teeth and his skin or, you know, penetrating him. Okay, this is a disclaimer now, I'm going to be saying penetrating quite a lot, so get the laughs out. Basically, the virus didn't pass through to him because it was stopped by the t-shirt. And we know just, we know like um, just being touched by a walker doesn't turn you into a walker. You need to be physically either scratched or bitten, as we've seen, for example, the governor when he was touching his daughter, brushing her hair and all that. So touching a walker doesn't turn you into a walker, although the walker touched him, the virus that didn't pass on to him. And come on, let's just look at the whole Glenn thing again. You're telling me that hundreds, hun not one, hundreds of walkers were ripping out Nicholas's insides. Glenn was under him and he managed to get under a dumpster without even being touched by a walker. If you're, yeah, let's just spend belief for a minute and say, yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. That, that was just a diversion. Potentially how this is just like a diversion. Number two. Carl is immune. Okay, so let's just say that he, the walker bite did actually bite him. However, just like the way that vaccines work, by injecting people with a lessened, like a weaker version of the virus, or a dead strain of the virus, your body learns to fight the virus off. So potentially that's what's happened to Carl. He's been bitten very smallly, like a little bit of the virus got into him, tiny amounts got into him, and his body has learned to fight it off. So it's kind of like he was bitten by a bit, but it was small enough that his antibodies were actually able to like defeat it. And now we have the first immune, like now we have the first immunity of the virus that we know of. And let's just look back at season four, that we had that virus going around. Carl was infected with that virus. His body managed to fight off that virus, you know, the one that was turning the walkers into those red eye walkers. Since then, we've not had somebody that's been bitten, so it's kind of like a test. Unless the walk, unless the Walking Dead is just trying to forget about that. But let's just go with this at the moment. Maybe Carl got infected by this virus. Again, that was a dead strain. That was a weakened version. His body's fought off, and now Carl's immune. I think, in terms of arcs, if we were like kind of looking to end the series, that could be an interesting arc of the series. But because they've said it's going to be going on forever, maybe not. But still interesting. And finally, number three, a classic in like the conspiracies, it's all a dream. This one's been going on from right in the beginning and kind of still we get glimpses of it to even today. Well, in the beginning of season eight, that Rick was in a coma and it was all just a dream inside his head. Let's look back to a series. Let's just look back to the series premiere of season eight, episode one. 
We see Rick in like the old man beard and he's living in that house with Judith supposedly, well let's hope that was Judith, all grown up and Carl was there as well. It was, this was implied that this was all a dream where Rick's living now in a world where nothing actually, nothing terrifying happens apart from birds which is the most of his troubles now. That was implied to be the dream. However, what if that was reality? What if The Walking Dead is actually a story about an old man either making up his own fantasy, like his own graphic novels about living in a world so different from his own, like, because Carl was there in this dream, so he could still be alive, and but he fantasizes about the, this horrible world that he lives in, he's like surviving, trying to survive, trying to get away from this like boring, mundane life, a life maybe that he couldn't live where he takes risks and, you know, he's this big shot. But again, it was just all a dream. Or maybe it's about like a man fighting with like a mental illness, like an old man fighting like dementia, for example, and his minds are being taken over by the dementia, which is represent, which the disease is represented by those knee, like by the Negans and the walkers of the world being taken to, and it's just getting worse, and he's trying to fight back. That just got really deep. But that was it. That's our three theories of how Carl could survive The Walking Dead. Okay, let's just put our money on now that he is going to leave. However, let's just say this about the whole facade about Chandler Riggs being fired on his 18th birthday and the whole dad being involved. All of that kind of like media circus around that. If I was going to like, uh, wanted to hint at like um, somebody was going to die, but maybe they weren't, you know, they're just because they maybe they didn't have a very good ending planned, you know, I thought personally that like, just them blowing up Alexandra would be good enough, but they want to leave you uh, wanting to come back, just like a ratings thing. If I wanted to do that, and I would probably, in the real world, just say, yeah, we're having all these arguments, and, you know, he's going to get dropped, and, you know, just for a sense of actually realism that it could actually happen in the story, because imagine... If like Chandler Riggs just signed another three, four year contract with them, then how? Then no one would believe that he was gonna dead. Everybody would just think that it was just a whole. It's just a. It's just a cliffhanger for no reason. But he would <laughs> that he's just gonna survive it anyway. So that's why they've made this whole media facade, kind of cover up the fact that he'll survive. We'll only really find out on the next episode of The Walking Dead. Remember to subscribe to Planet Mark. Comment, share, like. Uh, we're going to be doing the whole series on The Walking Dead, like kind of reactions videos and like kind of summarising bits, little bits you missed. So watch out for that. Remember to follow us on Twitter at PlanetMarkVlog or Facebook.com forward slash PlanetMarkVlog. See you next one guys. Boy, 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 boy.